Welcome to the low frequency variant detection from Sanger Sequencing with Mutation Surveyor Software. My name is Fu Quinn and I will be the presenter for this webinar. Low frequency variant detection is a very difficult thing to do because of the minor contribution of the mutant allele versus the normal allele. It can be as low as 5% contribution and can therefore be hidden in the background of the wild type sequence. Some software do not have the sensitivity required to pick up these variations from Sanger sequences. However, difficult as it may be, Low frequency variants such as somatic mutation, heteroplasmy, and mosaic mutation can cause many human diseases and must be examined thoroughly. Somatic mutation can change normal cells to cancer cells at very low concentration. Heteroplasmy is the presence of multiple genomes, most likely mitochondria, that can cause various mitochondria diseases. And mosaic mutation is the different configuration of chromosomes and genes caused by error in cell division. By identifying possible areas of mutations, we can begin to develop therapeutic treatment for such diseases. In this case, Mutation Surveyor becomes an indispensable tool in assisting the researcher or clinician in detecting and indicating the possible variants from Sanger sequences. With Mutation Surveyor high sensitivity, many of the low frequency variations hidden in the baseline can be detected. As mentioned before, these variations can be an indication of somatic mutation, mosaic mutation, heteroplasmy, or other low-frequency variants. Minor allele or low-frequency variation can be detected down to 5% of the primary peak. After detecting these variations, Mutation Surveyor makes it easy for you to identify the variants by placing markers at position where they were detected. And finally, after reviewing all the data, the custom report can color code and show these positions in a report that can be printed or exported as a text, Excel, or XML file. The default settings in Mutation Survey is not optimized to detect low frequency variants. In this case, a possible cancer is somatic mutation in the TP53 gene. As you can see here, the minor component T appears under the CP while not appearing elsewhere in the sample trace. The mutation electropherogram has a peak at that location in both directions, indicating a possible mutation that did not pass the threshold for mutation detection. This position is 200 relative to the GenBank sequence. To see how the percentage of the mutant allele compared to the normal allele, we can use the Mutation Quantification Tool. To access the Mutation Quantification Tool, click on the Quantify icon. A dialog box will then appear. From here, select Simplify Allele Ratio to see the ratio of the mutant allele contribution compared to the normal allele. Then select Process 2D Small Peak and then OK. The quantification table will generate. Looking at position 200 for a sample 112T, we see that the mutation allele contributes 6.15% compared to the normal allele contribution of 93.85%. In order to allow Mutation Surveyor to identify this minor allele, we need to change the setting to optimize Mutation Surveyor to detect low frequency peaks. As mentioned before, Mutation Surveyor has high sensitivity to detect minor allele as low as 5% of the primary peak. However, there is an option in the display tab of the process settings that must be selected in order to detect low frequency variants. Here, the setting is called Check 2D Small Peaks. The lower you set your threshold, the higher the sensitivity for detecting low frequency variants. A word of caution when using these settings. A threshold that is too low may result in false positives, but a threshold that is too high may result in false negatives. Some projects may require higher sensitivity while others require lower sensitivity. It is variable depending on the project. With that option selected, Mutation Surveyor will look for low intensity peaks above 200 RFU of the same color that appear the same spatial position in both the forward and reverse sample. All criteria must be met in order for Mutation Surveyor to recognize the minor allele. We can see that there is now a green bar over the position that we discussed about earlier. This green bar indicates that this position is a possible somatic mutation. Again, it is only displayed if the same color peak is detected at the same position in both the forward and reverse direction. After reviewing all your data, you can print a report that will include all low frequency variants. The first type of report is known as the Advanced Two Directional Report. This report can be accessed by going to the Report tab and selecting Advanced Two Directional Report. A dialog box will appear with some options that can be changed. However, you must select Display Mosaic Mutations in order to display the low frequency variants detected in the analysis. After selecting the desired option, hit OK and the report will generate. The report will group the forward and reverse samples together. 
Variation where the teal background indicate low frequency variance. Variation with blue text or high confidence. This is not low frequency variation because the background is not color coded. Munilio frequency is also shown at the bottom of each variation. The second type of report is known as the custom report and offers more flexibility than an advanced two directional report. To reach the custom report, go to the report tab on the main menu toolbar, then select custom report. In the filter tab of the custom report, there are two settings that need to be checked. The first option that needs to be selected is the possible mosaic option on the mutation types. This option will display all low frequency variants that were detected using the check 2D small peaks. The next option is under the mutation calls. If the mutation is in the region of interest, have it selected. You can create region of interest by using certain tools in Mutation Surveyor. For more information, please refer to the Creating ROI webinar. If the mutation is in the CDS, select this option. And if the mutation is a few base pair outside the CDS, you can specify the number of bases before and after the CDS to display in order to include the mutation. After selecting these options, go to the color tab of the custom report to select the color coding scheme for low frequency variants. The default color for mosaic mutation is teal. If you want to change it, use the drop down menu. For more information concerning other features, please refer to the custom report webinar. Once you are done customizing the report, hit OK and the report will generate. The report will generate with a color coding scheme as specified in the settings. The variation color coded in teal are low frequency variants with comma that include somatic mutation. Pink backgrounds show novel variants that cause a change to the amino acid sequence. Red text variation are low confidence and suggest that you review the mutation call. You can include other variants such as negative SNPs or negative mutation in the report. At the bottom, the mean allele frequency is displayed. This report can be printed or exported as a text, Excel, or XML file by choosing the appropriate options in the report toolbar. To quickly review the webinar, we talked about how to change the settings to detect and display low frequency variants that could be an indication of somatic mutation, mosaic mutation, heteroplasmy, or other low frequency variants. The threshold can be changed in order to lower or raise sensitivity. The position indicated with a green bar in the mutation electropharogram is only displayed if the same color peaks are detected in both the forward and reverse direction at the same position. The example shown is a somatic mutation with 6.5% mu and contribution. And finally, we discuss how to include these variants in a custom report that can be printed or exported in different formats. This concludes Subgenetic Webinar on Low Frequency Variant Detection. If you would like more information or want to try a free 30-day trial, please visit www.softgenetics.com or send an email to info at softgenetics.com. You may also request for online training if you are interested in learning more about the software and its capabilities. Thank you for joining me in this webinar.